Lads and ladies, happy St. Patrick's Day. Jesse Warden here. There's a guy at my work who's been serving bangers and mash all week. I go up to the guy on Monday. He's like, we're out of mashed potatoes. We don't got any, but we have potatoes. And so I'm like, dude, the working conditions at this place. It was funny, it's like that guy needs a hug or a Care Bear stare or something. Oh no! Potato. I told him I could mash him myself. Like you just hit him, you're done. You got mashed potatoes. Anyway, I got the idea. Like, wouldn't it be cool to create a game around mashed potatoes? Pixie has a couple text objects. We're going to use the text one. It's simple, it's easy to use, but it still has enough styling options to be flexible enough for most of our needs. So we're gonna create a new pixie text object here. And it, the constructor takes in the default text that you want it to show on the screen. However, the text defaults to black. So if you have a black background like we do, you're not gonna be able to see it. Let's use a new property that it has called text style. And you set it to a new pixie text style object. And all this class does is it wraps an object and it knows how to interpret this class from text style. So we're gonna pass in an object with one property called fill, set it to white, which is six F's with a zero X in front is the hexadecimal value of white and a really large number. Now we have a white text field. Let's go ahead and add it to the stage so we can see it. So we'll say app stage, add child, add the score text, hit save, let it reload, go back to our browser and there you go. We got a score in the top left, it's text field. And if you were to move it around, it would redraw on the screen. And notice if we change the score to something else, you'd see score 100 after the screen refreshes or you could just type in cow, man. Hit save and it, basically whatever text you want. If we're gonna do a score, we have to keep that value somewhere. So let's do a let of score and set it to zero by default. Let's create a set score method. What it'll do is it'll take our value. We'll set the score to whatever you pass in. And then we'll say score text, set text, score plus whatever the score value is. Thing you wanna note here is that the set text method allows you to update the text after you've called it. So constructor functions are only called one time. Here, we can set the text later after the thing is created and change it as many times as we want. But more importantly, this actually does a redraw of the canvas for us based on the game loop. So we don't actually have to put this in a game loop or handle any of that, it'll automatically redraw. So now if we set the score to zero and then we later on say set score to 300 as a number, it'll automatically change it later to score of 300. We print out how big is this text field. Considering it's not loading an image, we can instantly get the size of this thing before it's even rendered to the screen. So let's log that out. We'll say score text width and score text width. If we go to our console down below here, we'll see that our score text width is 97. If we want to get this perfectly aligned to the right, in the left it's easy, everything defaults to zero. But if we want it to the right, we gotta get the stages width minus this width. That's the exact X that we want. Now in CSS, if you're willing to do absolute positioning, you can simply say this text field's right is zero and its top is zero and it would be flush with whatever this particular container was based on if it was its parent. We don't have that in Canvas. Canvas is raw, everything's absolutely positioned. So let's get some absolute math. Although this black square is our canvas, the screen is what actually calculates the width with regards to the actual browser and what it fits in with. Let's use the screen's width minus the text width. This is not gonna work, but we'll show you how we're close. We'll say this X is basically the app screen width minus the score text width. I just want to point out the reason we can't use stage is stage is actually a container. If we query the stages width, by default it'll be zero because it has nothing in it. As soon as we add the text field, it'll calculate the text width and use that as how big the stage is. If we added the text X to 100, it would then be 100 plus whatever the text field's width is as the container's width. And stage is only a measurement of what's inside of it. It's not actually a hard-coded value of how big is the black rectangle we're actually looking at or the canvas on the actual screen inside the browser. So if you hit save, go back, for some reason, it didn't minus all the way. It should actually be over here a couple pixels, but why is that completely busted? Well, when you change any object, it's remeasured and its width and height are recalculated. 
In our case, we've set the text longer because we added two characters at 300 and we modified the style. Now changing the color doesn't really matter, but once you start adding things like bold and italics or changing the font, which has different kerning, AKA the space between the characters and things like that, it can constantly change the width and height. So your measurement has to be redone every time you change those properties. Otherwise your elements aren't positioned. Now that the case of text and score, we only have to do this one time, which is fantastic. However, to be 100% safe, we'll put it inside of the score. And that way, after we set the style, after we've created everything and we're good to go, at this point, the only thing we're changing is text. So if we went from 300 to 3000 or a lot of zeros, it would constantly move left to handle that. Otherwise, you could set a hard coded width and just not really care about the length. So we're gonna set it here, hit save, and now it correctly positions to the top right. That is how you deal with widths that change because again, your object can change, you have to remeasure. There's this concept of redraw which will teach you when we start creating visual components. That is how you create text in Pixie. That is how you create text styles and modify how it looks. And there's many more properties than fill. Take a look in the docs. And we add it to the stage just like any other display object, but it has a nice set text method that allows you to update the text after you've created it. It automatically redraws it on the screen for you. And just like every other display object, you can absolutely position it wherever you want. Do some semi-responsive design by adding its, multiplying it based on its properties changing over time.